Hey everybody and welcome back to another video here on Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking it out. Hopefully everybody is enjoying their day, whatever day of the week you might be viewing this. Um, we are going to be diving into another video in our intravenous IV fluid series, particularly on plasma light. Uh, we have covered a whole bunch of IV fluid videos, normal saline, lactated ringers, dextrose in water, albumin. We've talked about hypotonic, isotonic, hypertonic. We've talked about fluid compartments. We've compared a bunch of these. So um, we'll, all of that is linked in a playlist in this video's description. Uh, we also wanted to give a quick shout out. We're trying to buff up our Patreon page. We'll link our Patreon page in this video's description too. Uh, we'll upload the study guide to this video as well as practice questions. Uh, there's free membership as well as some tiered membership. We'd love for you to check that out and consider joining if you have an interest or uh, capability or want to just support the channel. Um, so check those two things out. Uh, no further ado, we'll stop with the shameless plugs and we will do a quick 30 second break for introduction and then we'll dive right into plasma light. Hey everybody and welcome to Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking out the video. Here at Whiteboard Medicine, our goal is to create medical education content for all types of interested learners. That includes videos, practice questions, study resources, and much more. We would love for you to join our community by subscribing, hit that bell button. We're also working to build a high yield Patreon page. It's going to be full of practice questions, video outlines, notes, commercial free content, and much more. None of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on. All right, plasma light. So what we're going to be talking about today is we'll talk about what plasma light is. We'll talk about the clinical uses for plasma light, acid base and electrolyte effects, contraindications and cautions, common myths and clinical pearls. Um, as a caveat, uh, we actually do not use plasma light in our day-to-day -day practice. Um, so this is spoken based on our own kind of reading and understanding and knowledge behind it. Uh, and as always, as you know, this is not medical advice, just opinion uh, and education. Uh, so if anyone does use plasma light in their day-to-day, -day, definitely let us know. Let us know what you think when you use it, what you choose to use it for. We'd love for that real-world uh, example to be shared. But plasma light in general is a balanced isotonic crystalloid solution. If we break that down, balanced, for those of you that have watched some of these videos, um, supports that this is kind of more physiologic. This is in contrast to an unbalanced crystalloid solution, such as normal saline, right? Normal saline has 154 milliequivalents of sodium. It's got 154 milliequivalents of chloride. This is much higher than serum levels, so this is an unbalanced solution. Whereas plasma light is much closer to serum physiologic levels of electrolytes, so it's balanced. It's isotonic, which means it does not exert tonicity, no tonicity. And tonicity, which we'll talk more about, is um, the amount of tone, the amount of solute on each side of a cell membrane that then draws water to one side of the cell membrane. So if something is isotonic, it is the same tonicity of the intracellular space, so it does not draw water across the cell membrane in either direction. It's neutral, it's isotonic. Uh, and then it is a crystalloid. This is in comparison to a colloid. We actually did a video on crystalloid versus colloids as well. Um, so check that out, linked in that playlist. Uh, it is used for IV fluid resuscitation and maintenance, and it closely mimics human plasma in electrolyte composition and pH, right? So it's balanced, making it ideal for critical care settings. A little less common than the other balanced uh, crystalloid, which is lactated ringers, uh, although plasmolite obviously is definitely out there. So definition, what is plasmolite? Well, plasma light is a, a buffered isotonic crystalloid. Ooh, that was a little wiggly, huh? Buffered isotonic crystalloid with acetate and gluconate that function as buffers. So lactated ringers has sodium lactate as, as its buffer. Normal saline does not have a buffer. And plasma light has acetate and gluconate as its buffer. So that helps uh, if there's acidemia at play. It helps buffer that acidemia and improve pH. Its composition as we mentioned, is much more balanced. It's much closer to the serum composition. If we were to look at normal saline, hopefully we could pull that out of our brain. Lactated ringers, hopefully we could pull that out of our brain. And then serum. Plasmolite has about 140 milliequivalents of sodium. Normal saline has 154. Lactated ringers has about 130-ish. And then serum is 135 to 145. So you can see uh, plasma light sodium content is the same as serum, whereas normal saline is high. Lactated ringers is about the same, but just a little lower. Chloride in plasma light, 98 milliequivalents. 
normal saline, 154 milliequivalents of chloride. Lactated ringers is like about 110, uh, and serum is somewhere in this 110 range too. Um, but uh, the exact range, oh boy, someone quote us on this, like 90-ish, maybe 95 to 110, something like that. So this is about physiologic too, normal saline higher. Lactated ringers is about physiologic as well. Um, but these two, sodium and chloride and plasmolite, um, are very balanced with the serum electrolytes. Potassium is 5 milliequivalents. Normal saline does not have potassium. LR is like about 3 to 4 milliequivalents of potassium. And then the serum potassium, 3 to 5.0. So the higher end, um, LR has a less potassium than plasmolite, but still physiologic. Magnesium, 3 milliequivalents. Uh, normal saline does not have magnesium. Lactated ringers does not have magnesium. And serum mag is like about 2 is normal for serum mag. And then you have these two buffers, acetate and gluconate which buffer because they're turned into bicarbonate. And that is how they buffer the uh, serum. The osmolarity is 294. Uh, normal saline's osmolarity, I think, is like 310. LR, I think, is about maybe 290-ish. Uh, no, no, it's less than that. I think it's like 270-ish. And then serum is about 290. It's obviously a range, but that's right in that physiologic range. Uh, and then the pH is about 7.4. Right, we know that normal serum pH is 7.35 to 7.45, so right smack dab in the middle. Normal saline, it varies based on the bag you get, but it's something like 7.25-ish, so acidemic compared to plasmolite. So you can see here that this is very balanced, it's very physiologic, the electrolyte content, uh, as well as the concentration, is much more similar to the serum than normal saline, and even more similar to the serum than lactate or ringers, although it's certainly close. All right, as we mentioned, looks like we wrote it here to emphasize the point more, most physiologic, uh, physiologically similar crystalloid to the plasma, and that statement's in comparison to normal saline and even lactated ringers. All right, clinical uses of plasmolite, common indications. Well, like all IV fluids, volume resuscitation is a big common indication. Maintenance fluids in hospitalized patients, rehydration and large volume ICU use. And all this is a little better because, again, it's so balanced. So with normal saline, you get worried about this hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis because what happens is the 154 milliequivalents of chloride in normal saline leads to hyperchloremia, high chloride. That high chloride then causes the kidneys to excrete bicarbonate and that leads to this non-anion gap metabolic acidosis, NAGMA, this hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis. Plasmolite has about 98 milliequivalents of chloride. This is about normal, right? This is just what's in the body. So you don't get that risk for hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis. LR, you don't get that risk either. This is a risk of using normal saline. So that's a big advantage over normal saline. It also has more stable acid base profile. As we mentioned, plasmolite has acetate buffer as well as gluconate buffer. So if the serum is acidemic, these buffers help improve the pH. LR has sodium lactate as a buffer. Normal saline does not have any buffer at all, right? So normal saline has no buffer. And that's why plasmolite uh, has a more stable acid-base profile. It does not cause hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis, and it does buffer with both acetate and gluconate to help improve the pH in those with um, acidemia. So good uh, crystalloid uh, in that sense. Acid-base and electrolyte effects, we'll kind of go into this again. So plasmolite has acetate, and it has gluconate. And these both by the liver are converted to bicarbonate. Right, bicarbonate is HCO3 with a little negative on top. And this bicarbonate obviously helps buffer any acidosis because acidosis is hydrogen ions. And those hydrogen ions can then be buffered by bicarbonate um, through the conversion of gluconate and acetate by the liver. Other things to note, the chloride level is similar to the plasma chloride level, prevents Chloride overload, which is another way of saying that non-anion get metabolic acidosis or that hyperchloremia that normal saline can cause. So you have this really nicely physiologic content of chloride and plasmolite. Another thing to note is there's no calcium in plasmolite. All right, this can be something we don't think about but can be meaningful, 
right? So lactated ringers, which is also balanced, just like plasmolite. The lactated ringers does have calcium in it, okay? And calcium with things like blood transfusions, right? Blood has citrate. And there's a whole slew of other medications like ceftriaxone, an antibiotic, um, that cannot be run with calcium. And if you only have one IV or if you have a ton of different meds and things you need to give, this can actually be a big pain for nurses. If any nurses watching this, let us know how big of a pain that is when we order a bunch of lactated ringers that is incompatible with different medications because of the calcium content. So plasmolite does not have calcium, so it's safe for blood transfusions and other kind of calcium intolerant drugs. There are small amounts of potassium right, about five milliequivalents, as well as magnesium, about three milliequivalents. And this is probably a blessing. Again, this is fairly balanced, fairly physiologic. Um, LR does have some potassium, right, about three to four milliequivalents. Normal saline does not have any potassium. LR does not have magnesium, and normal saline does not have magnesium. Um, so you can see that plasmolite kind of has this balanced amount of potassium and magnesium, similar to LR for potassium, uh, but standalone, right? It's the um, LR normal saline do not have any magnesium. So something to keep in mind when we think about uses. Contraindications and cautions. So one of the things people talk about is if you have hyperkalemia or high blood potassium, should you give plasmolite? Because as we said, plasmolite contains 5 milliequivalents of potassium. People talk about the same thing for lactated ringers, which has like 3 to 4 milliequivalents of potassium. And they have studied this in lactated ringers and found that LR is a better solution to give than normal saline, even for hyperkalemia, because it's so much more balanced. It doesn't cause that non-angate metabolic acidosis and things that can worsen some of your potassium levels. Um, we don't know if there's similar data for plasmolite. So it's unclear if this is a myth or not, um, but you, you probably should be a little cautious. Five milliequivalents is a decent amount, although again, it's probably you know not super meaningful, but maybe just choose lactated ringers, um, or if you believe lactated ringers has too much potassium too, normal saline we suppose, but um, again, this is something that taught, so it's important to know about. Uh, renal failure, obviously if you're giving a crystalloid that has potassium and magnesium and your kidneys are failing, uh, so you're not able to regulate the amount of potassium and magnesium, that might be something to think about. If someone has an alkalosis, metabolic alkalosis, their pH is high, remember there's gluconate and acetate in plasmolite, these buffers. So it can maybe worsen the pH because um, these are turned into bicarbonate. And then if you have liver dysfunction, uh, the acetate metabolism into bicarbonate may be slow because the liver does that. Um, so it might not have the same buffering capacity as it would if you had normal liver function. Common myths about plasmolite. Myth number one, it contains too much potassium. It contains 5 milliequivalents. This is generally safe, right? Normal potassium is 3.5 to 5 milliequivalents. This has 5 milliequivalents in a whole liter. Um, so it's not a huge amount of potassium. If you have normal renal function, all that's probably safe and fine. Myth number two, it's the same as LR. It is very different, right? Different buffering system. LR has sodium lactate as its buffer versus plasmolite, which, as we said, has gluconate and acetate. In addition to that, plasmolite has no calcium, whereas LR does have calcium, all right, about 2.5. And then plasmolite has magnesium, Right, it had about three milliequivalents per liter of magnesium, um, whereas lactated ringers does not have magnesium. Myth three is that it's too expensive. Uh, people suggest that the benefit here is it could reduce complications, ICU costs, and some long-term stuff. Again, we don't have plasmolite to use at our institution, um, so we, we can't comment on this. It probably is more expensive than normal saline and lactated ringers, although we don't have those numbers, so just something to keep in mind. All right, clinical pearls. This is the closest match to plasma. Um, for fluid therapy, this is the most balanced, the most similar to the serum. Um, great for critically ill patients because it's so balanced. It is compatible with blood products because it does not have calcium. There's no calcium in it. Um, when acid base balance is a concern, especially when you're acidemic, because it has two buffering agents, gluconate and acetate. Um, so all those are things to keep in mind with our friend here, Plasmolite. All right, here's a visual summary of plasmolite. 140 milliequivalents of sodium, 98 of chloride, 5 of potassium, 3 of magnesium. You get two buffering solutions 
for the price of one. The pH is very similar to normal serum pH. Osmolarity is very similar to normal serum pH. Acid base effect, it does alkalinize a little bit because you have those two buffers. Um, it, you know, is used in a whole bunch of different places, and it is compatible with meds and blood products, um, whereas LR, given its calcium content, is not. Hopefully that was helpful. That's the basics kind of comprehensive overview um, on Plasmolite. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have. Let us know if you use it. Uh, if you want this study guide, uh, it's on the Patreon page. We'll post practice questions too. Check out our other intravenous fluid IVF videos. Um, learn about normal saline lactated ringers and all that good stuff. Uh, we gypped you out of going over this. Uh, which we go over in a lot of the other videos, so you can check some of those out. Sorry to jip you out on that, but we're just so in the zone. We cruise right by it. Um, and in any case, uh, stay well, keep learning. We hope to see you next time.